I'm sure we can all aspire to be as accurate as my laser-assisted shot testing and training system shown here. To achieve that laser-like accuracy, we need to learn how to find our perfect eye alignment. If I gave you information that improves your game to a higher level faster than any piece of equipment you currently own, wouldn't you try it? I'll teach you how with three everyday items that will cost you nothing, takes less than five minutes, and can be done in your home even without the access to a pool table. Best of all, you can test your existing alignment or establish a new one if required. If you see the shot wrong, you'll shoot it wrong. Okay, so we're outside again today talking about eye dominance, and I know I sacrifice uh, video quality and sound for being out here, but, you know, every video is just uh, filmed inside a room, and I like to be outside, so we do it a little different here at 6.5. The information is still sound. Dominant eye, I feel, is a broken and outdated term, uh, or at best, maybe a pacifier for anyone who just doesn't want to advance their knowledge of aiming at pool. Our eyes function as a team, and yes, generally one takes the lead, but modern testing has proven that dominance is variable. You can learn where each individual eye's dominant location is, or more so the alignment of each eye, and all this is great, but more just for basic shooting instruction. When you take your shot and pull, do you close one eye? No, too much information will be admitted, and most importantly, it's our depth perception. The test is based on the assumption that when you put your hands outward, dominating instincts will prevail, and the opening will naturally fall on the line of the dominant eye. For me, from decades of specialized shooting, if I do the eye, uh, eye dominance test, whichever side the opening is on, that eye will pick up the dominance. Remember, I said dominance is variable. I'm guessing a lot of you have tried this test and have had inaccurate or frustrating results, right? For pool, we are looking for that location between the eyes where our visual cortex determines where exactly that transition takes place. And this is unique to each individual and will give us the foundation for our aim when we go to the pool table. Here's a quick and easy test for you to do at home or at work to see the flaws of dominant eye testing and just how hard your eyes are working to deceive you. Hold a pointed object, something like this pencil, at arm's length away from your body. Focus your eyes 100% onto the tip of the pencil while facing a thin stationary object that is approximately 10 feet away. In this example, I use a thin lamp. With your arm extended and both eyes focused only on the pencil tip, the lamp will visually split into two identical blurry objects in the background. Remain focused on the tip and shift the pencil to the left until it covers your blurry left object. Close your right eye. The pencil will now be aligned with the object. Open both eyes and refocus on the pencil point. Shift to the right to cover the blurry right object Close your left eye. Now your right eye is aligned with the lamp post. Why did I just drag you through three minutes on a demo for something that's not even effective in pool? Well, sometimes a deeper understanding of the why nots make the whys easier to comprehend. What is Vision Center? How do we find it? I'll break it down slowly. Feel free to repeat as necessary. It is a point at which both eyes converge focus onto an object. You and I are going to find this convergence point and then project it to a mirrored location onto our face so that we have a physical landmark which we can later reference to our shot line allowing us to measure consistency in turn giving us accuracy. To find it, we need a mirror, tape, and a playing card. A couple of quick notes. The preferred mirror would be at eye level at approximately 30 to 36 inches away while standing, although a seated position could be improvised, again at eye level. The mirror needs to be flat against the wall or equivalent as tilting could corrupt the mirrored image, providing inaccurate results. As for tape, all is fair game, only requiring a small amount. Playing cards. One card will be bent during the testing. Uh, it will compromise your deck. If this is not an option, 
poster board is an excellent alternative cut down to size of a playing card which is approximately two and a half by three and a half inches. Copy paper is too flimsy. Don't try it along with lined paper. Don't do it. It won't work. You're welcome. Let's get into the setup along with a few tips to give us the best results possible. Let's quickly go over selecting and folding the card. Uh, first, do not use a face card. It's too busy and will be distracting for our test. Uh, ideally, the two uh, as a backup, the four or an ace. But ideally, these cards give us the most white space, uh, again, that would be not distracting uh, for the purpose of what we need it for. Uh, so we'll remove that ace. If we were to use a two, our fold would ideally be one and one quarter inches or approximately 32 millimeters in from the short edge. So on this four, you can see these two lines lightly scribed on this card. It would be one and a quarter inch in from either side. Okay, so this card is already pre-folded. Also, you want to fold in toward the white side. So not on the back side, but the face side of the card, you'll want to make that fold in that area. When you make that fold, your one and a quarter inch fold, you want to make sure it's crisp and centered. Here I'm pressing it down with a uh, permanent marker or plastic body of it. And what you're looking for is a perfect 90 degree edge, okay? When I say 90 up this way, but you also don't want it distorted like this or something weird. So manipulate that back so it's perfectly straight. And we can finalize this adjustment when we put it on the mirror. Okay, so that would be using the two. And lastly, if you decided to uh, use your poster board, again, a one and a quarter inch fold. I have two little marks right here that are at the one and a quarter inch. And you would fold that over and try to be as precise as possible. And if it's a playing card, you would fold it inboard so uh, the white side was uh, folded over on itself. We would fold it over, uh, take our marker, make a very abrupt edge, okay? And then ideally what we were looking for would be a perfect 90 degree. I'm not sure how that looks in the camera, but again, we can finalize it once we get to the mirror. Let's head to the mirror now. Here we are at the mirror, having already taped up the card to save time. When taping the card, you'll tape the longer or the longest section of the card, keeping the tape toward the outer edges of the card as to not interfere with this central area on the card. The one and a quarter bent portion should be facing directly toward you or 90 degrees from the mirror itself. The leading edge should be perfectly straight and not canted to the left or to the right. As far as height, you want the top to be at least at eye level, and that will naturally cause the bottom of the card to fall somewhere slightly below your nose. Let's go ahead and perform our vision center test and get our own individual eye calibration, which we can apply to the shot line once we go to the pool table. Okay, trying to get you guys the best information. I stand here with painter's tape on my nose at 30 to 36 inches away from this mirror. I have two uh, cameras going, one from over here giving you the general information view and one down here that is basically like real time what it's going to look like. Having binocular vision, you're going to be able to see both sides of this card standing where you're at. But your focus, your intended focus is to find the center of this edge, meaning if I shift left, I see this club, or if I shift right, I see this club. If I shift left, I see this red. I want to keep oscillating from side to side until I see with that binocular vision equal parts of the right side and the left side. Facing with my head straight forward, I'm gonna go ahead and move to the right. I can see too much of that side. 
Move to the left, I can see too much of that. I start to get it centered and I can see more club than red. And I'm just kind of loosely focusing from center, left, right, not focusing too hard on any one thing, seeing myself in the reflection just kind of in a blurry fashion in the background. And right there, if I were to make a mark about right there would be where the center of that card is. So I'm going to shift my head over. Okay, so if I can stop wobbling right about there would be my vision center. Because pool is so individualized, how you apply this information will be up to you. I'll leave you with some drills and examples of what I use testing my own alignment and the mechanics. Compete against me, critique me, or implement them into your own alignment training. The footage is all B-roll stuff without much editing, voiced over with descriptions so you know what's going on. Now let's go have some fun. The follow drill. Specs are up on the screen. Strike the cue. Follow the object ball into the pocket. I uh, consider this a good alignment and technique testing drill. Uh, basically, that two and a half inch gap between a tee, I get a lot of comments. Yeah, but it's a short distance, so it makes it easier. Mathematically, your two contact points are being struck within the accuracy of a quarter thickness of a credit card. So if you make it between that two and a half inch T, you'll make it on any table on the planet. If you found yourself struggling on that follow drill and you couldn't even follow, uh, chase the ball into the pocket, let alone the golf tees, this would be your next logical drill. This here will determine whether or not you have an alignment issue or your vision center or vision center and alignment, or if you're actually putting unwanted action on the cue ball when you are striking for that follow shot. So this is a very simple drill. In, in just a relaxed fashion, walk up here, strike the ball, and put it between the two and a half inch golf tees. Uh, I sped this footage up, but if you are having a problem with this, it is likely an alignment or a vision center or a vision alignment issue because you would have to strike so far off of the vertical access to cause a manual error on that to strike that tee. It would just be, you would have big problems and you would notice it. So here we move to the fifth ball and we've closed that gap up. You've seen the specs on there. This is a very small margin of error, okay? Don't cheat yourself and shoot this 395 times uh, and think that you've got it nailed down. All five of these shots are shot in consecutive order, okay? Um... I just broke this one down so that you could see it a little better. You can see that I do make an error. And if you notice on that laser on my face, I was crossed over my visual alignment or my vision center, okay? So I had an error on that, and it caused that wobble of that uh, golf tee. But this shows you just how close this is. This, if you make this, again, I don't care what table you're on or what distance you're shooting, you're going to own it. Now, the... Kind of a neat thing is we talked about consistency is accuracy. This is a screen catch from every or all four balls, not the fifth one, but all four balls. And I want you to just kind of do like one of those games where you spot the differences. This is very important in your accuracy. This is the down and back drill. I don't do it often, so that's why I'm stumbling around out here looking like I'm lost. But uh, yeah, you basically start out at the foot spot uh, where you'd rack the ball, shoot it down to the end rail, and it comes back. Uh, my total travel distance is 111 inches. Um, the reason I don't really do this drill often is because you can't tell, did I have an alignment issue? Did I have a mechanical issue? Do I have a stroke issue? Or do I have a dead rail issue? So um, if it's done correctly, 
you know, obviously you don't have any issues. So uh, this one here was pretty good. I was probably uh, just a slight bit off, but that's the drill. So I don't think you can just do specific drills all day long. You got to incorporate some regular shots. And here's exactly what I'm doing. You need to do this to make sure that it's just not your alignment, but actually make sure that you know where you're aligning to. You have to set up on the line that will pocket that ball. You guys know I'm a fractional aimer. I use an aiming system, Poology. So you probably recognize this. Zone A, 70 position value, 35 alignment value. And here I am. I'm setting up right now. There's no uh, reinforcements here, right? I lay it down, align the stick. I know what degree this is. So here I go. I show you with the cue. That's my shot line. There I am looking at the shot line. I show you my nose. I show you where that vision center is supposed to be on that shot line. I get down on the shot. I know, right? So you're applying this. Now, if you play that back and look at my stroke right there, it was absolutely terrible and I barely made that shot. So this one is a little more realistic. I don't go through the whole pointing and looking at my nose. I just get up here. Um, I don't know. I stroke the crap out of that shaft. I don't know what that's all about. And I get up, and there's no time wasted right in the center of the pocket. You also have to do these drills. And the last drill is so terrible it deserves its own introduction. Object ball on the spot in the kitchen. Cue ball on the foot spot at the rack. Strike the cue ball in a stop shot fashion, stopping at the object ball, driving it into the short rail. Upon its return, it re-engages the cue ball, sending it back to the tip of your cue shaft, and then following back down and stopping back on the spot of the rack. So you've been practicing and you're feeling pretty good like a ninja with a cue stick in his hand. Well, this is the drill for you. This is probably not something a beginner wants to get a hold of, but give it a try. You got to have everything together for this one. So it, on this return cue ball shot, you know, if you're within a diamond left or right of your hand, you're doing something. Um, if that uh, object ball stays anywhere near the center of the table, uh, you're also doing something. So to achieve the entire goal, it's, uh, you know, you just got to have everything together. But what I do want to say is I know my videos are quirky, but I really hope the, uh, the eye alignment, uh, you understood that and you can apply it and it works for you. It helps you figure out those shots, those easy straight shots that you're missing all the way down to these super difficult ones. So I greatly appreciate you guys watching. It's been real fun. And uh, yeah, there you go. Of course, I'm excited to uh, do the next video. So uh, looking forward to it. And thanks again, everybody. And uh, I hope to hear from you. Y'all have a good one.